Welcome everybody to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette and we're so glad you joined us for this episode of Stay Curious. Today we're going to look at some Hispanic astronauts because this has been National Hispanic Month in America. We're going to look back at uh, Captain Kirk's suborbital flight to space. He's got a book out and he's got some really interesting things to say a year later about his experience at age 91, I believe. No, he's 91 now. And uh, we've got Marty here. Oh, we're going to talk a little bit about our favorite subject, Marty, Carmonauts, since we're celebrating uh, uh, Shatner's year in space. Uh, how you doing, Marty? Doing fine, Mark. How are good. you? Well, I'm good. We had a big day yesterday. If you didn't see Mr. Hugh Harris on our Stay Curious program talking about some of the shuttles of Rocktober, as I call it, or Rocketober is what we should call it, Marty. Uh, awesome show from 89-year-old Mr. Hugh Harris on, on top of his game. Of course, he was for 35 years a public information officer for NASA and uh, had the head post of that for uh, four or five years, and uh, you want to check Hugh Harris out. And Marty and I hung out and, and had a wonderful time with astronaut John Harrington. And we're going to have a program taped with John Harrington tomorrow, Friday, on Stay Curious. And Marty and I will be here monitoring the rebroadcast of that tape session with the first Native American in space, John Harrington, so we can see your comments tomorrow. So look forward to that. Uh, what a great guy, and we'll we'll tease that a little bit later, too. But uh, we do want to mention that we're having a space memorabilia auction November 19th, starting at noon. It will be online only. We're going to forego people being in the museum uh, and see how that works out. Frankly, the attendance has kind of dropped off as everybody's watching the auction of over 400 items are going to be auctioned. There'll be a lot of us watching it on our smartphones and tablets and, and those sort of devices. So November 19th at noon, save your money and buy some serious memorabilia. There's all kinds of authentic astronaut autographs, uh, uh, badges, patches, and tons of photographs, all handled by our chief operating officer and auctioneer, Chuck Jeffrey. And there is our crew, Dragon 4 crew, wanting to get them back to uh, Earth. Uh, and I've got the latest information. We've got Alex Carl, our ESA uh, Eurocom, is uh, on one of the coasts waiting to be on the boat to go pick up these four astronauts. Uh, from left to right is uh, Jell uh, Lindgren. Uh, and then that is Samantha Cristoforetti, the ESA astronaut, Jessica Watkins, uh, uh, and um, Bob Hines is over there on the right. They all have been waved off again on a landing because of the weather. We've had some uh, a cold front go through Florida, bringing some winds and rainy weather around here on the splashdown zones. They can land either in the Atlantic Ocean or the Gulf. Uh, Mexico and our friend Alex Carl is actually on the Gulf side uh, in my communication with him waiting for it to come down. He's privileged to be the ESA contact there for his friend uh, uh, Samantha Cristoforetti. And Samantha, this is her second long excursion on an expedition to the space station. She'll have over a year and a half in space and or right around a year and a few months when she comes back. And uh, so we can't wait to bring them back safely. They are looking at now no earlier than a, a docking tomorrow morning, 11.35 a.m., and targeting the landing at around 4.50 p.m. off the coast of Florida tomorrow afternoon. And they have uh, two other opportunities uh, to bring them down on uh, Saturday. Uh, is a, will be an opportunity to bring them down on either side of the state. So all of that will be uh, broadcast on NASA Live, of course. Dragon Freedom remains healthy while currently docked to the space station. This crew of Expedition 68 have been up there for about six months. So we're welcoming to get them back. And if it works out, Marty and I are going to do another Stay Curious program with Alex Carl of ESA 
uh, and get his firsthand account there of, of uh, bringing home European astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti. And Jessica Watkins, by the way, is an Artemis astronaut. You could be looking at the first not only woman on the moon, but person of color on the moon. So uh, uh, I know she's done a good job up there on the space station. Well, we've got two birthdays to celebrate, and, and this is Mr. Uh, Rich Clifford, and he passed away last year, December 28th, uh, but I wanted to mention him would have been his birthday today. He would have been Cl uh, Clifford's 70th birthday. Uh, I know talking to people like uh, Peggy and Jay Honeycutt, uh, a well-revered man, uh, a really likable guy. Wish I could have met him. He actually flew in space with um, uh, Parkinson's disease, uh, which was uh, uh, his STS. Uh, he was diagnosed in 1994, and he flew Endeavor in April 94 in uh, STS-76 in 1996 and actually did a spacewalk outside the Mir Space Station. So uh, I'm sure his family misses uh, Rich Clifford on his birthday and uh, an outstanding man and individual, and we wanted to recognize him. Uh, uh, R.I.P. there, Rich uh, Clifford. But today's birthday, boy, is another Ohio knot, Marty. 25 astronauts uh, born or grew up in Ohio, and uh, this is Michael Timothy Good. And he was born in um, Parma, Ohio, raised in Broadford Heights nearby. Those are both basically suburbs of Cleveland. And uh, uh, Parma is where the Drew Carey show was centered for y'all that followed the comedian Drew Carey. He's doing a, a game show, The Price is Right, I believe, uh, is his uh, cozy job now. <laughs> But uh, I digress. This uh, Buckeye has four EVAs totaling 29 hours. He was one of the last people to touch the, uh, the Hubble Space Station on STS-125. He was on a hard hat construction mission, 132 in 2010, and retired from NASA in 2019. He is also a uh, University of Notre Dame graduate, uh, all right? But uh, 25 astronauts claim Ohio is their home, and Timothy Good is one of them there. And we hope he's having a wonderful uh, birthday today. He's an Air Force uh, aviator, and uh, only two Air Force rated navigators were selected as, NASA, as astronauts, the other being Richard uh, Mullane in 1978. And both these navigators were weapons systems officers. So. He knows a lot of secrets, Marty, being a weapons systems officer there. Timothy Good, hope you're having a great birthday, my friend. Well, looking back on space history, Marty, wow, can you believe it that it was a year ago when Captain Kirk, William Shatner, went to space with three others shown there. Je Bezos is over there on the left applauding them as they came out of their, their Blue Origin capsule. And um, Shatner was quite profoundly moved by all of this he in fact said right after his landing this was october uh uh on october 13th 2021 uh, what you gave me is the most profound experience i can imagine shatner said telling founder blue origin founder jeff bezos quote i am so filled with emotion about what just happened it's extraordinary i hope i never recover from this is what shatner said with tears in his eyes and, well, he did never recover from it. In fact, it's very interesting that a book has been released that Shatner wrote about his uh, experience. This is biography called Boldly Go, which he co-wrote with TV and film writer Joshua Brandon. And this book, a year after this suborbital flight of five minutes, is about a 10-minute flight, four or five minutes of weightlessness, uh, this book is filled with, uh, well, here's what, here's what Shatner said. In this book, uh, all he says is when he observed and turned his gaze from the earth to black expanse of the cosmos, quote, all I saw was death. And this book is filled with grim anecdotes about Shatner's experience, bolting above the Earth's atmosphere aboard a real-life rocket. Of course, after his stint as playing Captain Kirk in the 
1960s Star Trek TV show and several franchise movies. That's his claim to fame. Of course, he does a lot of science uh, voiceovers. Uh, he has a, a, the Unexplained, I think, is a program that he has out there. So this guy's very attuned to science. And, and uh, then he says, quote, in the book, I look back at Earth, given my background and having read a lot of things about the evolution of Earth over 5 billion years and how all the beauty of nature has evolved, I thought about how we're killing everything. I felt this overwhelming sadness for the Earth. I didn't realize it until I got down, says Shatner. When I stepped out of the spacecraft, I started crying. I didn't know why. It took me hours to understand why I was weeping. I realized I was in grief for the earth. Quite a profound statement there, Marty. And he says, I don't want to ever forget, nor have I forgotten the momentousness of that occasion. So there, I just sold a few books of Shatner's Boldly Go. And uh, please buy them on Amazon Smile as, as the American Space Museum, your favorite nonprofit. But uh, quite uh, interesting there, Marty. Uh, Mr. Shatner at age 91 reflecting back and, and saying that all he saw was death when he looked out into the cosmos. So, uh, And we had a suborbital Sarah Sabri here. And she, she was the one we interviewed her. She was on the last, actually, uh, suborbital flight uh, in a New Shepard 22. And boy, was she ever effervescent and... And so positive about looking out in space, right, Marty? Yeah. Uh, but she's only about 70 years younger than Shatner. So maybe youth had something to do with that there. So, Well, it also uh, uh, spurred a little bit for me to talk a, a moment about what does make an astronaut. Marty and I are very, uh, over our great blue sky here, the, the, the thin blue line. The only border that should really matter on our Earth, the, the, the line that keeps us alive. But imagine Shatner looking out at this and then saying all he saw was death. But uh, what? where does space begin? So here's a meme for you. It begins at the Kármán line, all right? And uh, 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 where's my... This guy is... is um, let me get my notes on Kármán. Here's the, here's the physicist Kármán that came up with the idea of the Kármán line. And I left my notes on that somewhere else, so forgive me there all about the Kármán line there. But uh, in, I think it's about the 1960s, he came up with the concept that space begins at 100 kilometers or 62 miles. There you have the troposphere, the stratosphere, where most of the clouds are in those two areas, the mesosphere. That's the thin atmosphere where meteors burned up. That's 50 miles high. And then the Kármán line starts at 100 kilometers or 62 miles high where the atmosphere molecules are so thin. There is a thermosphere that goes a little bit higher, okay, and that's where aurora are. Now, the space station is about 225 miles above the Earth. So it is, uh, you know, almost 200 miles above the Kármán line. But generally, the Kármán line is where you're weightless, and uh, there have been, uh, we'll talk about that in a second, how many people have done this suborbital flight thing. Um, here is the blast-off of the new, uh, there is Dr. Kármán. There's a blast-off of the one of the new Shepard rocket launches from a drone, all right? And as we add these suborbital people to our, our annuals of going to the edge of space, uh, Marty and I on Stay Curious have agreed that uh, we want to di differ differentiate the humans who orbited Earth from the the uh, Karmanots, uh, the suborbital flight. And there is the rocket liftoff of a new Shepard flight profile, and you can see the Karman line there, and they do go above it, uh, but just barely, okay? Now, uh, the Air Force actually says 50 miles is space. And uh, which confuses the issue when you're talking about suborbital flights of the X-15 rocket plane, for example. But here's a little uh, mem I put together. Um, humans who've orbited the Earth, we are putting at 592. Now, I'm going to say plus or minus 5 on this, all right? It's really probably plus or minus 2. 
And my database here is based on William Harwood, the CBS veteran reporter, at one time a couple years ago is when I started doing this. So I may have missed somebody. But we just had three rookies go to space on Crew Dragon 5. All right. And the only experienced uh, astronaut that went up of the four was Wakata of JAXA. Women who orbited Earth, 72. We just added two to that. Uh, Nicole Mann, the commander, and the uh, Russian, uh, uh, the fifth Russian woman to go to space. Only five Russian women are among the 72 women who've orbited the Earth, all right? Over 50 of those women are American space shuttle astronauts. The suborbital flights are 41, all right? And there's five repeaters. Who's the repeaters? Well, you've got Grissom and Shepard that did Mercury flights, and you've got um, um, uh, the uh, X-15 pilot, uh, uh, Marty help me, uh, having a brain phase here, the uh, uh, Joe, Joe uh, Engel. Joe Engel uh, was on the X-15 and went above the Kármán line. And then there's two Russians, cosmonauts, that aborted a flight. And it was, uh, they had to abort the flight in the second stage, uh, 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 first stage, it knocked into each other, and they went suborbital. And uh, it was Joe Engel that I was thinking about, Marty. You got to know. Jaeger did not go into, uh, he did not make it to uh, above the Kármán line. No, Joe, he broke the speed barrier, right. but he never uh, went above the Kármán line. You'd had to be in an X-15 for that. And I don't think he flew an X-15. So 41 suborbital, five repeats, all right? Uh, so you take away from that, uh, five from 41 leaves you 36 uh, uh, suborbital flights. Uh, and the two, Shepard and Grissom, they also orbit at Earth, okay? So they're, they're actually counted in the... Uh, uh, Earth orbiting one there. When I put five repeats, these are five people that did suborbital flights that later did orbital flights. So I've got the total humans above the Kármán line of 631. Now, when we were out and saw the wonderful talk by John Harrington the other day, he had this meme up, meme up on the board there. 108 billion people are estimated to have been born on Earth in its history. So you're fudging a lot of millions there, maybe in the prehistoric times, but uh, but that's an interesting number in uh, the uh, let's say one million years of human history. 108 billion people have been born. 638 humans have been privileged to go above the Kármán line. Man, that's a tiny percentage. Humans who've left the Earth to orbit the Moon. 24, of course. 12 humans have walked on the Moon. So. A little, some numbers there, and behind me, record number uh, humans orbiting the Earth. That would be 14, and that's right now. Today in space history, we have more human beings orbiting the Earth than any time in history. You've got 11 on the International Space Station, soon to be uh, cut down to, to seven when the four come back. Well, where's the other ones, Marty? Oh, yeah, that's right. We've got... Tangong, the heavenly palace of China orbiting the earth, and it has two men and a woman on it. So 11 and 3 is 14. 13 was the record tied uh, three or four times, but now we've got a new record for the number of humans orbiting uh, in space at one time is 14. Marty, growing up with the Apollo era, we certainly thought that number would be like 140 or 1,014. Uh, 50 years after the last landing on the moon, but it's not. And it just goes to show you how hard space is, as well as somewhat the, the lack of enthusiasm for humans to, to really embrace this. Though you think everybody loves Star Trek and and uh, wants to go to space. Um, it's, it's, it's a select group, really. Uh, some people see it a waste of money, though not $1 has been cashed in space yet. We need to get the Bezos hotels and uh, up there to do that, I believe. Uh, so it, it's very interesting when you look at the number of humans uh, that have gone to space in space history, and we're setting a record with 14 people right now. So hope you enjoy that look at uh, 631 human beings 
uh, have gone above the Kármán line. And of those, 592 have orbited the Earth. Well, National Hispanic Heritage Month runs from September 15th to October 15th. And uh, we've been behind this year of, of celebrating these Hispanic astronauts and their heritage. And so we'll do a little bit of that today on Stay Curious as we're looking at some of these astronauts in this collage. I'm going to have Marty get his uh, little circle out there to point out a few of them there. Elena Cho is in the middle. We're going to talk about her in the middle in a moment. Uh, I wanted to point out uh, uh, in the upper right-hand corner, Marty, is uh, 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 Joe Acaba. And Joe was born in Inglewood, California. And he's a, have a Hispanic parents uh, from the Dominican Republic. And he is an ANISA astronaut, he is there. And uh, below him is uh, Michael Lopez Allegra, uh, who's a good friend of... Uh, uh, John Harrington, you'll hear John in his interview tomorrow talk a lot about L.A. as they call him. He grew up in Mission uh, uh, Vio, Colorado, uh, but his parents were also of uh, Hispanic descent in there. Uh, over on the far, uh, uh, the orange suit to the right, that's a Zimka. And George Zimka is a Marine colonel. He grew up in New York City, and he has... Uh, uh, heritage from uh, uh, his family. I'm looking, yeah, uh, Columbia. And uh, over there to the, uh, in the centers of Elena Choa, to the left of her, Marty, uh, we met Jose Hernandez out at the Space Center. Uh, we'll talk about him a little more in a minute, but he's from California, Stockton, California. Again, uh, family has Hispanic connections. And in the upper left-hand corner, that is uh, Carlos Noriega. And he's from Lima, Peru, but grew up in Santa Clara, California. Uh, Noriega there. And obviously a lot of space with Hispanic spacewalkers there. And there at the bottom left is... Um, who is at the bottom left there, Marty? That's... Uh, oh... I don't have his picture on here. Let me get. Scroll. Uh, I need the scrolls right. That's uh oh, that's a John uh, Olivia. Yes, John Olivia. All right, is from uh, uh, Mexico. Is where his uh, heritage roots go from in there. All right. So let me go. Let me go to another collage here of more Hispanic astronauts, and uh, this one is fudging a little bit when you talk about Hispanic astronauts because on the left there is Mendez, uh, Arnaldo Mendez, and he's the first person from Latin America to fly in space. And he's also considered the first black person to fly in space. So he's on the black African-American or African uh, uh, list as well as Hispanic list there. Uh, Neuro uh, Rudolfo Vila was the first Mexican in space and the only Mexican in space uh, from his country truly there. And then Franklin Chang Diaz above my head there. Franklin Chang Diaz was the first Costa Rican astronaut. Uh, he is doing great things in space history still. He flew in space uh, two, four, yeah, seven times. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, he's seven times uh, tied with Jerry uh, Ross for the most American flights in space, seven. And he's done it all in space there. In rounding out some more of our Hispanic American astronauts, we have Sid Gutierrez there. And Sid is the first uh, US born Hispanic astronaut. And Sid uh, grew up in Albuquerque, a veteran of two space flights. And uh, he was uh, an Air Force aviator. And then you have, of course, Elena Choa, and Elena Choa is really an overachiever there. She was born in Los Angeles, but considers La Mesa, California, to be her home. She's the first female Hispanic astronaut to fly in space. She had uh, uh, four missions, uh, four shuttle missions, over a thousand hours in space. She is the first Hispanic director and second female director at Johnson Space Center. So quite a, a uh, well-revered person, Elena Choa. 
and uh, uh, Triple T, Travis Thompson's told us in training, uh, there's a little uh, pond out there that they call Lake Ochoa for where they took the M1 tank into while she was driving and having to get stuck in there. Uh, you'll hear uh, Harrington talk about that tomorrow. Michael Lopez Allegra, we were talking about, the, his nickname's L.A. He was on some very important hard hat construction missions on the International Space Station, like 113, that uh, he flew with John Harrington. In uh, 92 is another one of his hard hat missions there. And uh, Carlos Noriega there, Hispan a, a Marine, two shuttle flights, 19 hours on spacewalks. And uh, he was part of the Constellation program that segued into Artemis. Uh, grew up in, uh, born in Lima, Peru. All right. <coughs> so a true Hispanic native there. So there's a look at several of our, there's actually 13 Hispanic astronauts. There's Marty. Yeah, I told you we're going to talk a moment there about Jose Hernandez there. Marty and I are going out and seeing the astronaut of the day. And uh, uh, and it really provides a lot of great background for our Stay Curious program there, as well as recruiting a few astronauts to talk to. But uh, Jose uh, was born in uh, uh, French Camp, California, considered Stockton to be his hometown. Uh, what an amazing story he had, Marty. Remember us telling that 10 years old, he was a migrant worker uh, in the fields picking pickles or cucumbers, or actually, uh, and tomatoes and so forth, working with his parents that were uh, immigrants and, and migrant workers. And he said that he adjusted the rabbit ears on the TV when Gene Cernan and uh, Harrison Schmidt were walking on the moon in December 1972 on Apollo 17. And he was so engrossed with watching them walk on the moon that that night he told his father he was going to be an astronaut. And his ast his dad said, you, you want to be an astronaut? And he said, yes. He says, let's go to the kitchen. And Hernandez said, only two things happened in the kitchen. One, no, three things. We ate. He said, there's three things that happened in the kitchen. Only two of them were good. We ate. We prayed and we got disciplined <laughs> in the kitchen. So he didn't know what he said that was going to make his dad mad. And his dad, he said, was his his was so wise and he looked up to his dad and, and mentored him. Uh, I think there's three boys in the family, Marty. Is that right? Uh, two, boys and a, uh, two boys and a girl. And he said, his dad said, you want to be an astronaut? Well, I'm going to tell you what you have to do. And he outlined a four or five step plan. And one was you have to work hard. And one you're going to have to take ridicule because you're Hispanic. And people aren't going to believe you that you can achieve such a goal. What else, Marty? It's write down where you are now. That's what his dad said. And then write down or identify what you need to do to get to where you want to be. Those to me were the two uh, key items. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, it was. And and for your dad to tell a 10-year-old um, that you can do this, it meant the world to him, didn't it, Marty? My dad said I could do this. And a lot of us, as we look back on life, you know, maybe we didn't have that kind of parenting. Uh, like, you're going to be an astronaut, Mark? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, when pigs fly, you know, or when you, when you uh, have dinner with an astronaut, maybe you'll, you'll be it. But so you never know what's going to happen in life. And he's a very inspirational guy, Jose Hernandez. And uh, he's working in the space business now, Marty. I forget exactly what what he's involved with. Do you remember? No, I don't. Um, yep, but a migrant farmer that made it there in a great way to end our conversation on Stay Curious today about Hispanic astronauts. And... Um, when, uh, and so, Marty, you got anything from our friends out there? You want to say hi to some of our Stay Curious regulars? Well, before I do that, you know, one thing he talked about was as a migrant worker, he had to go to Southern California, central, basically Central California, Northern. So he'd go to three different schools every year. Oh, yes, yeah. right. That yeah. was, yes. Yes, very, very, uh, very hard to stay focused yeah. on there. Uh, real inspiration. He's got a big family, I think he was saying, and I'm sure he's going to carry that message on to his kids. 
Who who's uh, staying curious today, Marty? Well, we have Mark and Tom Usiak. Hey, brothers. Yep. And Dave Stang is watching. William Whiting, Vince Rossi, Larry Puskar. He's watching from Winter Springs, Florida. He Larry, needs to, he needs uh, to come in here and do a show with us. Yes, I think Larry's planning on coming by. I hope. Uh, so hope to see you, Larry. Please do, and we'll get you in the the guest chair here and share a little bit with yeah. us. And Doug Forrest is watching. Hey, Doug, keep those pencils sharp, buddy. <laughs> I love my electric eraser. The greatest thing in my pencil kit. <laughs> and Carlton Bailey. Carlton. He's not sleeping and taking an afternoon nap? All right, good for him. So he signed on late, he said, but he's he's there. Okay. And then Professor Keith uh, Soul. Hey, Keith. And Steve Hammer and Angela Butler. Great. And we saw uh, 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 some of your friends chimed in early there that you're going to watch the show today, including Ophelia in Normandy, France. Hey, Robert Law up there in in Scotland and uh, all of our friends around the world. We're glad that you're embracing Stay Curious and hope that you tell your friends to watch us on YouTube as we're always increasing our audience. Uh, it's something that we want to do to get the museum out there. It has nothing to do with, with uh, Marty being famous, okay? It's all about our museum uh, reaching out and you know what we do, folks. We preserve the birth of America's space age right here in its delivery room, Brevard County. And uh, I'm always inspired by this green screen behind me of looking at our beautiful earth there with the sunrise and the, the uh, uh, you know, every day that happens and for astronauts 17 times a day. So we'll be thinking of those four astronauts coming home and 14 orbiting the earth right now. And uh, let me punch that up there to, to uh, remind everybody that uh, we were so privileged to have dinner last night with John Harrington above my head there. And yes, sir, that's Triple T joined us on the left there and Marty in the back. And that is John's wonderful girlfriend, Sue, and her last name, Marty? Purvis. Purvis. Sue Purvis. She has written a wonderful book called, Marty, I forget. Uh, it's all about training um uh, rescue dogs that, that's her thing she trains rescue rescue dogs in the rocky mountains and does other things too yeah it's the book is about her life basically which has a very interesting life mm -hmm. the one thing that i'm curious to read about is she's a uh, avalanche hunter avalanche, avalanche hunter. hunter yeah she goes and hunts for people who got Oh, buried right. in avalanches. Yes. Yeah, and, and with, with these train dogs. dogs. You can tell we were enamored with her as much as we were with John there. But uh, what a great interview we had with John. This will hopefully become a norm that we can hook a few of these astronauts that our new friend Nick Thomas is uh, uh, the astronaut wrangler at Kennedy Visitors Complex. Uh, Nick is, is telling some of these astronauts they need to be on Stay Curious. John embraced it. And uh, they're so busy out there from 9 to 5 but uh, after when they're done working, we're going to we brought him down here and told him we'd buy him a meal. And that was all it took to get him on Stay Curious. You're going to enjoy the show with him tomorrow. Uh, and uh, he's got a he is a Native American, a, a, a Chickasaw uh, a tribe member. Pardon me. From Oklahoma. Yeah, from Oklahoma. And he's growing a nice ponytail there. He said, I think he's getting into his ponytail there. And Triple T's looking good, still got some health issues going on, but we're going to work up a couple uh, programs with Triple T and get back to telling a few more tales from the White Room there. So uh, thank you all for being with us today on Stay Curious. Uh, Marty, thank you for a great uh, smooth show today, and, and we were recording the show yesterday. We've had a great week here, kind of everyone's still recovering a little bit from the Hurricane uh, Ian uh, God bless the people on the west coast of Florida, down by Fort Myers, and also up at Flagler Beach. They got hit quite hard up there at the Palm Coast area with a lot of flooding. So keep those people in your minds. Hope the weather clears up to bring Crew Dragon 4 home on uh, Friday. Until then, on behalf of Marty Winkle and all of us here at the American Space Museum, we can't wait to see you tomorrow with astronaut John Harrington to bridge the space between us.